Hi, I'm Lucas Cameron, plant manager of Incredible Tiny Homes. I'm DJ Wilder, tech support and supervisor over Off Grid. And today we're going to be taking you through the DIY Off Grid system that's installed in the iBox. We're going to take you through uh, four subsections of this. Will be the startup and shutdown, the day-to-day -day operation, your maintenance, and troubleshooting. But first off, DJ is going to take you through the startup of this. We hope that this condensed video is a help to the homeowners and those of you looking to purchase an iBox to give you a full rounded scope of what off-grid living is. Um, it's definitely a conscious life choice. There is definitely adjustments you have to make to lifestyle with this uh, because you are your own utility company. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to DJ and he's going to walk you through as if you had just got your iBox. Obviously, we have this here on a test area today, but if you were opening your closet cabinet door uh, above the uh, toilet in the bathroom area, this would be what would be found in there. Your battery packs would be above on the shelf. And then, of course, this is representative to the power that would be coming in if you had plugged in the front of your house. This is representative to the power that would be coming out to service your loads. Battery on. Your battery will start up. Right there is your reset button uh, to show it's running if any alarms pop up and that's the indication of the battery life for your battery. Okay, your battery's on. Make sure your inverter's on underneath. Switch it on. And then raise your panel for your solar panels. Flip the two breakers on so you got the connection. Lift it. Make sure your disconnect is on and not off it looks good close it then it's up and running okay this is the input this is the output that's your ac your solar panel connected uh, that's your battery life and that's your output of whatever it's running off of your solar panels are connected charging the battery and pushing out to power your output and then, same way for the shutdown, cut your solar panels off, cut the inverter off, and then cut the battery off. Unplug, and it's dead. All right, so when you've understood how to start up your system and shut it down, now as far as what we're going to do is we're going to turn it back on and then we're going to go through more in depth on the day to day operation as to questions that you would have concerning the output readouts on your screen, loads being used, how many loads, etc. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reestablish the power to the house. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the battery bank back on. This would be as if you were receiving your house for the first time. Uh, you're going to power up your house. Now, once the, the unit uh, comes online, make sure to turn the power on. And once the unit is fully powered on and the loads are starting to be serviced from this, then what you can do is keep an eye on the load meter right here that if you ever have a question, you want to look in your cabinet. If you zoom in here and take a look closely, you can see that right now that load is like absolutely showing nothing. Now, the, you're going to see here in just a second that right there the photovoltaic kicked into the battery just as DJ showed how that this would start up a minute ago. You can see there's a LI icon that stands for lithium. The, if you get the green pure lead carbon batteries that we also have option, if you'd like that in your house, it will say SLD and um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, SLA, that's sealed lead acid. So depending on that, you may see that symbol look different due to the fact of the batteries that you get in your house. But a day-to-day -day use in this, what you would see right now is you can see these lights are running. So this would be representative to like if you had the lights on above your uh, kitchen sink. Well, we're just going to fire up the microwave here. And you can see now that the load went up about 25 to toward 50%. Now, <clears throat> that microwave pulls about 2,000 watts. Um, so you can see that um, it's using a considerable amount of power. You can hear the fans starting up in your unit and that's, that's totally fine and totally normal. Now the thing about it is, is that as you can see with that load running, you obviously wouldn't want to run your water heater at the same time, 
run pumping system, run your microwave, and run a lot of loads at one time. If you individually turn on your loads in your house at a time and use them, it will give you a good clear indication and a realistic expectation of how much you're using at a given time. Um, another great thing to know from this too is that if you check the readout here on your batteries on the, the screen, and you can also look in your loft as well, the state of charge on your batteries, it will give you a uh, clear indication of what you're constantly using. The, um, the, the battery status monitor that we mount on the cabinet, it is extremely accurate for the pure lead carbon batteries. With the lithium batteries, it's really only useful for nighttime. Um, and, and even with that, there's kind of uh, a little bit of tweak that if you look at the um, owner's manual that we send out with this system, kind of helps clarify that deeper. We won't get into that right now. But the thing is, is your, most of your power is used off your lithium batteries on the top end, um, whereas AGM batteries are used across the full depth of the voltage on your battery. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now right now, the microwave finished working. We still have the lights on right now. We can plug in, use the outlets. And so with your water heater, um, for example, with um, your pumps and stuff like that, there's sometimes you're gonna be using multiple things at one time, that's totally fine. Your refrigerator will kick on. Um, if you're using a, a hot plate to cook with as opposed to the microwave, you're going to see loads fluctuate from uh, low usage to high. The main thing is, is that you don't overload the unit because if you overload the unit, it will turn off. And then it will try to restart shortly thereafter. Um, and that's totally fine, that's totally normal and typical. Um, but you, if you learn with your day-to-day -day usage, you can really get a handle for that where that, that situation will never happen. Because once again, you are your own utility company. Uh, now something to keep in mind <clears throat> is right here you can see that there's no EMP blocks below that. and if and um, later uh, in future videos for um, the factory here, we'll show you more in depth about EMP blocks. But those are like surge arresters, and if they're mounted on these boards, your AC one will be here, your DC one will be mounted here. That's an add on that you can have for your system to help protect it against a uh, utility surge. Because, for example, a customer had a house, they um, uh, a tractor trailer hit overhead wires, ripped it, caused a brownout, damaged their house's wiring, GFIs. They didn't have an off-grid power system, but if they even still had an AC EMP block on their house, that would have shielded that, shunted it to the ground, but instead it fried their GFIs, so when they plugged the house in again, it caused an electrical fire. Um, so that's a great add-on to have because the DC will protect your DC side of your off-grid system. The AC will protect the AC side of your off-grid system. So that's a real good add-on to have. But day-to-day -day operation, if for some reason um, that you wanted to completely bypass this off-grid system, what would be done is in your cabinet you will have twist locks. This twist lock lets the power go out to the loads. It comes out of the inverter. This twist lock you can see here, I can touch it, it's plugged in the wall, it's not going to hurt me, it's female. This power uh, coming out, all right, you're going to plug directly into um, your load and you'll completely bypass this system. Now in the cabinet, the wiring comes around. So it's a little bit different how you see here because we're in a test room. But in the house itself, if you open your cabinet, You'll see how the wiring comes around. Literally all you have to do is untwist lock that and twist lock to the wire going out to your load service panel. That completely bypasses the system just in case for some reason you ever had a failure of your system and needed it warranted, replaced. Um, that's the reason we designed that so that you wouldn't be left hanging. Okay, and that pretty much concludes, um, you know, as far as day-to-day -day operation goes, there is a wealth of knowledge that you can gain from your handbook that comes with this and also the owner's guide that we put together. And further questions, you can always reach out to us at support at incredibletinyhomes.com.